Hello! So today I'm going to talk about material style sheets. It seems that a lot of people get confused by them, so I thought that I would do a very basic tutorial about it. I have this grid with all these spheres, and they are pack primitives, because you should copy this up, and then I've checked this pack geometry before copying. Let's put a material style sheet on this. If you click the plus here, and select the data tree, you can choose material style sheets. And here is a pack grid, so I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna click add style sheet parameter. And the first thing that happens when I do that is if I go to this here, you can see I have this new tab here, shader. And here would be a scripted version of whatever you do here. So I'm adding a style here, and look here, you can see that the style has been added here. So I have these materials in the scene, so if I go to material here, you can see I have three principal shaders, red, green and blue, and if we go back here now, let's call the first style red, I'm going to right click and add a target, because we need to say what will be shaded here, so the default here is primitive, and because they are pack primitives, that means that, if I go in here, that this is one primitive, this is one primitive, and this one is one, uh, and so on. Um, but you can actually, with the material style sheet, go deeper and even go into individual polygons and put a shader on them or an override on them. But for this, I'm just going to use primitive and we're going to add an override. And the default is a material parameter. That means that you can go in into a shader and just override that parameter, like a texture or a color but I'm gonna set a material, so I'm gonna set a completely new material. I'm gonna go to material here, and I'm gonna choose the red one. Um, and you see, not much happened. And that is just because the viewport is not very good at updating. So if I would render this, you would see that they are actually red. And the easiest way to get around it, I found, is just to click another tab, and then go back. So now they're red here too. You can also add a condition. One way you can do that is set target from viewport. So if I do that, I can select a couple of these guys and click enter. And now you can see that it has created this condition that is a primitive group. Then I have the numbers of the selected primitives. If I go back, so you see that now all these guys are red. Let's create a new style sheet, add style. I'm gonna call this green uh, and I'm also going to target the primitive here and I'm going to do an override uh, like the other one I'm going to set the material I'm going to go here select the green and if we do the little update trick you can see that all of them are green now so now it doesn't care about the red ones and the reason for for that is just in the order they are so if I take this over the red one you can see we get the red ones back. Let's continue, and I'm gonna add a new one here. I'm gonna add a new style. The target will be primitive, and another material. So I'm gonna set the blue one now. So blue, if we go here, you can see it's blue. Now I'm actually gonna do another thing, because the nice thing, if you are setting conditions, is that you can, you can read attribute. So let's drop down a wrangle. So here's my wrangle. Uh, and in this wrangle, I'm going to create this attribute that's going to be an integer. And my integer will be called choose call. I want to have a random number. So I'm going to put down rand. Uh, and I'm going to use the pt number as a seed. That pt number. And now this would be a float, and I want to have an integer, so I'm going to continue. I'm going to first do a fit01, and a fit01 is the same thing as a fit, but it assumes that the source is between 0 and 1, so you don't have to type that as well. Uh, and I'm going to have a range of 0 to 3. So now this, this number will be converted to numbers between 0 and 3. It's still a float, though, so I'm going to type floor, which means that it's going to go to the lowest integer for every float. So if it's 2.5, it's going to be 2, and if it's 2.9, it's still going to be 2. So then we, it will be between 0 and 2. So if we look here, we have randomized the numbers 
between 0 and 2 for all these different pack primitives. And so, oh, I forgot one thing. I need to have this on primitives. So now if we go into the spreadsheet again, you can see I choose call is a primitive attribute. So let's go back to the data tree and we're going to put a condition to all this, add a condition. This one already has a condition, so that doesn't need it. And I'm going to add a condition to this one. And star here is just being applied to everything. Let's say primitive group for this one. And I'm going to use this attribute that we created. So choose call. If this is equal to zero, then it's green. And here, if choose call, if this is equal to one. And for the last one, if choose call is equal to two. So let's see what we get. We didn't get the blue one because I forgot to change this primitive group. So let's do this again. And now you can see we have these randomized colors. So I know this is very basic, but I just thought it could be a good way to get you started. So I hope that you found this useful and see you next time.